All right, so I just did a video on how with well, circles or circle equations, and we went from general form to standard form. Now, I'm about to show you how this works if I wanted to go from standard form to general form. Okay, so I'm going to keep this slide here just so you can get an idea. So this, so the red box, that's our uh, standard form equation, and I'm going to go back to the green equation, but I'm going to show you how we do that mathematically, okay, because you're like, duh, it's right there. But what if I did this? Wait for it. Wait for it. Ha! Watch this. And watch this. There we go. Ha! All right. So I want to change this equation that's in standard form. So standard form. And I'm going to change it to general form. Okay. So this takes a little bit of prior knowledge. And here we go. So the first thing I'm going to do is create some blank space is what I like to call it. So, six, so x squared minus 6x plus something. And then we'll do y squared plus 2y plus something, whoops, Freudian slip again, plus something, and we'll go ahead and move the 6 over. We can move the 6 over, no big deal. Equals negative 6. Now, if I'm going to add something to the equation, so notice I put those blank spaces there, I also have to add it on the other side here. Okay, so plus something, plus something, because a good mathematician balances out the equations. And so what I do in order to go from standard form to general form, I organize the variables, I make those blank spaces, and now I need to complete the square. So if you're like, complete the square, I've never heard of that technique. Make sure you check out my channel and look for uh, how to complete the square, or how to complete the square to solve equations. In this case, again, we're going to use complete the square as the technique to get my general form of the equation. So here's how we do it. Well, how we do it is, we look at b, which is negative 6, okay? So we take half of negative 6, and we're going to square it, and that's how we complete the square, all right? So it's negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3, negative 3 squared is 9. So 9 is the number I need to complete the square, and this makes a perfect square trinomial. And again, I go through the whole process of how that works and completing the square in another video, so make sure you watch. But why I'm doing this, okay, is I need to complete the square in order to make a perfect square trinomial to give me a squared binomial, okay, which means the shortcut is x minus 3 squared, all right? And the one thing I forgot to do, if we add 9, so I added that 9 to the equation on the left, I have to add 9 to the equation on the right. Okay, So x minus 3 squared. I'm going to do the same thing with this, the y's over here. So I take half of 2, so 2 divided by 2, and we're going to square it. So 2 divided by 2 is 1. 1 squared equals 1. So 1 is the number I need to complete the square for a perfect square trinomial. But if I add 1 to the left, add 1 to the right. And again, I set this up intentionally so that I could write it as a squared binomial, which gives me, that's of course positive, y plus, and the square root of 1 is 1, squared equals, and then I just add negative 6 plus 9, which is 3. 3 plus 1 is 4. <gasps> Wait a second. So this is in general form just like I promised, and let's go back. <gasps> That's exactly what we have. X minus 3 squared plus Y plus 1 squared equals 4. Yes, we did it right. So, to go from standard form to general form, you need your knowledge of complete the square to do it. The biggest mistake students make is when you uh, put the number you want on, on that side, then you have to remember to add it to the other side of the equation. Okay, So that's how you go from standard form to general form of the circle equations.